And now I'd like to introduce, like as we uh, go into the question and answer period in this video, Jasmine Yapoon from the San Francisco Ballet and the Board of Directors of the Arts Education of the Bay Area. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, how are you, Todd? Doing well. So take it away. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I first want to just applaud all the amazing work that Patrick and Mike are doing, um, as well as the youth who are being brave and letting their voices shine. And that film was just so beautiful to rewatch that and, and hear from her. So thank you, Mike, and thank you, Patrick. It's really, really wonderful. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. Um, so it's been a while since we had the curriculum slam and revisiting this. Um, you know, it's just really wonderful and rich, especially given the state of where we are in the community. Um, it's so important to remember that youth voices are, are brave, they're important, and we should be listening, and that their life experiences are important. So I'm wondering, um, taking a step back from the amazing presentation and all the the games that you had the audience play. Um, what is Bay Area Creative and Spark Poetry Program doing right now as you pivot some of your programming um, due to the health crisis? And um, how are you, were you engaging with um, youth in the schools back on March 16th? And how did those programs go? How have you been adapting? Are you still working with youth and creating these films? Um, if you could share with us a little bit about that, that'd be great. Sure. I know we have limited time. <laughs> Mike, you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so it was crazy going from having about 2,000 active students uh, where we we're sending teachers to all of a sudden all of the classes being canceled and we, we had to figure how can we still provide this service? How can we still have students staying creative in, in schools, at home, um, in their kitchen with their computer? Um, so we did a few things. Um, one being we started doing Zoom, live Zoom lessons uh, where the poets still see us, the, the kids still see us, and uh, I might be in my makeshift office, um, but we're still doing some of the same lessons we were before. Um, but outside of that, we had to get creative and say, hey, it's a completely different situation now. What can we do that's new? Um, and we responded a few different ways. One was by making video curriculum um, for things that we, uh, in, in the elementary schools, haven't really done before. We, we've showed the students how to make videos and made videos with them. Um, now we're doing a curriculum slam that we, we did a few workshops on, hey, here's how uh, here's how you, you can make videos. But now we're saying it's a competition in the same spark manner, just making everything a competition. <laughs> um, and there's gonna be prizes for who can do the best video. You guys, TikTok is popular right now, do it on TikTok. Um, make it fun, put some music behind it as long as it's uh, uh, free to use and not um, copyright uh, music. But somebody's like oh my older brother makes music can i use this i'm like yes yes you can <laughs> um so it's been really fun thinking what new things can we do one of which being the the curriculum slam not curriculum slam this is the curriculum slam uh being the screen slam um where the students get to make their own videos uh using their mom and their their siblings and going outside and around the house um, and then secondly, the curriculum that we're producing for teachers to use, because what happened to a lot of teachers was we, we got told, oh, we're going to be out for two weeks, make, make sure your curriculum can last for two weeks. And then it was, oh, the end of the school year. So all of a sudden, teachers that have been doing this for 12, 15 years that do the same thing every year said, wow, I have to make everything online. So as quickly as we could, we, we did build a curriculum that teachers can just send out. Um, and it's inter interactive, mostly on Google Forms, but the students can complete at their own leisure. Um, and it's, it has fun, entertaining videos in it, and they're still learning the same poetry tricks and a few new ones. 
Patrick, who are questions. Awesome, thank you. Um, Patrick, uh, can, do you want to add to that? Patrick's the um, executive director um, and you know, just share us a little bit more. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things I've been keeping touch uh, with a lot of virtual town halls and kind of getting note of what people are needing right now um, and what the concerns are of vulnerable populations. And one of the larger concerns is right now uh, food safety. You know, so many families were relying on <clears throat> lunches in schools, um, lunches after school and after school childcare, and that's just not happening anymore. So we were wondering how can we connect poetry to that work? So one of our new projects is called the Staff of Life, where we are delivering packets of poems written by students and our staff to food service delivery sites. I know in the city of Richmond is where we offer programming to a few thousand students a year. And um, so we're now delivering packets of poems to sites where they're delivering food to families in Richmond. And we're just gonna start bringing packets of poems to like grocery store workers and uh, UPS delivery people um, and just you know hand them packets of poems to thank them for their work that they're doing and kind of create that human connection right now. I think everyone is so um, concerned uh, and frightened and the future is so unclear. And I think what's so important right now is we reach out to each other with empathy and connection and poetry, especially spoken word, um, really thrives at doing that. I love that. I love that you are really making the, the human connection through poetry, uh, making spoken word poetry such an important part of your community. Um, so I really applaud you for that. I'm actually going to pass the baton to Reyna, who is my co-facilitator in this, um, so she can ask Mike and Patrick a question as well. Thank you so much, Desmond. Um, so I, being a poet myself, like poet have literally saved my life, you know, being an adolescent child dealing with family things and when you know whatever the world throws at kids and I'm so curious you know moving into this online platform how y'all have managed to maintain that you know personal and human connection throughout the poetry and also support students in their own understanding and unpacking of their emotions when it seems that we're in such we're in such a weird humanly distant space right now. Mike do you want to start off with this one? Yeah, definitely. Um, the very first online Zoom workshop, we, we took uh, two, weeks, two weeks off between when everything um, kind of closed down and when we said, okay, we're back with, with lessons and, and meetings. So the very first one we had um, addressed, hey, a lot of times we struggle to write a poem because we feel like everybody else feels that way or everybody else talks about it or everybody else thinks that. And it's not, it's not a new feeling for the world. And we get into this mindset as poets is I create something, it, it has to be new or original. If, if everybody else is thinking it, it can't be, it can't be art. Um, so the first workshop we did was covering five, uh, creative ways to address a feeling that that is shared, that is common. Um, and right now we're all kind of going through this shared common experience of being locked inside our house or our neighborhoods or not not really being able to, to uh, go into groups, go into schools, live how we were. So we were already on the same, on, on a lot of the same pages when it came to the feelings we were having. Um, and the first workshop was like, hey, just because we're all having this feeling doesn't mean that you can't creatively uh, write about it in what you're going through. Um, so we looked at five different ways to do that and they came up with the, the craziest different new poems that I, I didn't even see the connections coming. Um, until halfway through the poem was going that I'm like, I get it, I get you. Uh, so I, with, with our older students, uh, at the high school level, you know, in those workshops, the, that bonding that you're talking about, Raina, that like feeling of a safe space where the emotions are kind of collectively held by the group, it happens in that like live moment when you're all together in the classroom. So this question of how to replicate that, you know, virtually is, is a tough question. The way we're responding to it now is placing the students more in conversation with each other 
in regards to their writing. So we're focusing more heavily on revision work for poetry now, where they're doing peer response and peer review. So the poem becomes a means for them to have a conversation with each other, both about you know how to make the poem stronger and about what's going on in their lives, who they are as people, the emotions that are felt and shared through the poem. Um, and just rather than trying to have these um, whole group discussions that you have in a classroom that creates that collective bonding, that's now happening in like a one-on-one, -on -one, one student to another student as they respond to each other's poems and more of a peer review sort of, sort of format. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. I think that's also, you know, an, an awesome way for students to, you know, be in a space where they're simultaneously both a learner and a teacher. And I think learning, uh, teaching people how to do that and sort of balance those two roles is um, an awesome opportunity. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so I have I, another question. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Uh, hold on to your question. I don't want you to forget it. <laughs> um, is I am very much like my favorite thing to do is, is really create curriculum and I'll have a new idea. I'll see something a poet's doing. Um, I'll, I'll digest it, figure out exactly what it is and then say, hey, how can I teach kids how to do this? Um, so mm -hmm. a, a lot of the, the most excited I'll get is about the very fine points of different lessons to, to convey something. Um, so when you were talking about, oh, I, I did this with Legos, different colored blocks, different parts of speech, I was like, oh, tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> Um, so anytime anyone wants to talk curriculum with me in what are you doing with a lesson, um, that's a lot larger conversation too. Awesome. I will be finding you so we can talk curriculum things. That's great. Um, but the oh. last question I had as a personal artist and an independent artist, I wonder, like, are you spending any time, you know, devoted to your own practice at this time? Or is it mostly just spending that energy, um, giving that to your students? Yeah, I, I started out writing a poem a day for the first two weeks of the coronavirus. Um, and now I'm writing probably one or two a week. Most of these poems I'm using as example poems in poetry workshop videos. So we're doing poetry workshops live, like Mike said, via Zoom. We're also doing uh, these Google form workshops that are easily accessible. And then we're creating just like videos, like a Khan Academy kind of, you know, video. So there we have sample videos, or sample poems, all about the coronavirus, quite a few. Yeah, it, it was funny right. because every time I give a workshop, I, I make sure that I go through that same workshop first. Um, so I, like two hours later, I was just like, wow, this is, I like this thing that I wrote. Um, and I didn't end up using it as an example because it was a little bit, um, heavy for like the fourth graders I was working with. Uh, but I still created something that I liked, so. We are just out of time, um, but I really want to thank Mike Taylor and Patrick Ozen from uh, Bay Area Creative for all the work that you're doing at Spark Poetry and throughout the Bay Area. Um, Will This Be On The Test was a fantastic video. So if you're joining us late, go back and watch it. Um, but thank you again, Mike and Patrick. Stay healthy, be well. Um, thank and you so on much. And me and the rest of the team, thank you. Can I say that at bayareacreative.org? Um, Absolutely. The, plug, shameless plugs right now. <laughs> shameless plug. But there is, a, just, um, there is a link to the lesson that kind of connects. It's called The First Line on bayareacreative.org. There's a link to a lesson. It's a free lesson you can use. We have more curriculum for purchase, but if you just want one lesson, bayareacreative.org, and you'll find that link pretty quickly. We have a brand new website that just went live today, also. 10 minutes, like right before the call. <laughs> pretty much. Check out the website. It's up, it's running, it's live. Thank you so much, Mike and Patrick. Thank you.